please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. That's for the transcript purposes. This will be a 10 minute press conference. Joining us are the student athletes from Oral Roberts University, Max Asmus and Isaac McBride, as well as head coach Paul Mills. At this time, we'll turn it over to Coach Mills for his comments on the game and follow up with questions for all. Coach? Yeah, wrong night to, to have a bad night. Uh, a lot of credit goes to Duke. They're obviously really good. Um, you know, walking over here, they offered us Duke Blue Devil colored Powerade. Uh, so it's kind of indication of, of how much it was in our night. But uh, give Duke a lot of credit for, for how um, they played. But we can't lose perspective on this year and, and how much these guys have just propelled the program. Row three. Caden McFarland, 2 News, Oklahoma and Tulsa. Coach, uh, the slow start, how much of that do you think was that it's just so difficult to replicate what Duke is able to do, uh, you know, with Lively and the size and the athleticism defensively? Yeah, I mean, the, the opening shot Carlos Jurgens missed was able to retrieve his rebound and then it immediately gets blocked. And, you know, that, that's a play that, that he normally makes against the opponent. Uh, Connor Vanover, we, we do get to see that every day uh, with length around the rim. But, you know, again, I, I don't want to get caught up right now in, in shots that didn't go in or, or you know, that, that we just weren't able to convert. I just, I mean, my heart right now is just really, really proud of all that these guys did through the course of this season to, to elevate a program. Row one. There, Kip Coons, Press Box View. Uh, Max, what was Duke doing defensively on you that made it so hard for you to get open looks tonight? Uh, I mean, they uh, try to try to keep two on me, kind of all, at all times, and um, I was just out there, you know, making the right reads. Uh, we got some good looks. Um, they didn't fall, and it wasn't our night, but um, you know, give credit to them. Row three. Nathan Thompson, Fox 23 in Tulsa. Uh, this question's for Max. Uh, before I ask this, though, I just want to verify that this was your last game as an ORU player. Have you decided that officially? Um, I, I'm just in the moment right now and, um, you know, enjoying every part of the season we just had, and we'll look at the future later. And then uh, this being the last game of this season then for you, all you guys accomplished, have you have a chance to uh, appreciate that right now or is it going to take some time after the sting of this loss goes away? I mean, it'll probably take some time. I mean, um, you know, we're all disappointed. You know, we didn't come into the game expecting to lose. And so um, we just, it takes some time to, you know, reflect on the season and, you know, the, the, the good things that we did accomplish. Road two. Connor O'Gara, Saturday Road. Uh, Paul. You guys have seen some really good teams over the last few years. Where, where does this Duke team maybe rank among them? I know you guys saw Houston earlier in the year as well. Yeah, I mean, comparatively to, to Houston, they're a great rebounding team. I mean, you know, to out-rebound us by 14 uh, is a tribute to, to them. They, they have a great deal of length, uh, and their freshmen have grown up. You know, now this was game 35 for those guys. and. You know, probably about 20 games in, they obviously had a number of injuries. Uh, your freshmen, especially the ones that play, become sophomores. So they're, they're talented. Houston is is really good. And, you know, I, I've been – I've never been on this side of, of a loss uh, in, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I've been on the other side to where you win by 20. And, and a lot of those times it was a part of those teams – you were able to, to move forward. But a uh, really good Duke team. I, I can't really speculate where they're, where they're headed. Row three. Caden McFarland, 2 News, Oklahoma, Tulsa. Coach, you mentioned uh, this team elevating the program. It, kind of Max specifically, even if this isn't his final game, can you speak to what he's done in his career to elevate the program? Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, it, it would just be hard to put into words all that Max has has done, I mean, it, and, and I could go down the list, but obviously Max being a three-time AP All-American, two-time Summit League Player of the Year, uh, top three in, in scoring, and uh, I could go on and on with his accolades, but who he is off the court 
is an absolutely incredible person. I mean, I mean, you're looking at a guy who was a biomedical chemistry major with a 3.92 GPA, and he switched his major to mathematic, mathematics, so as not to interrupt our practice schedule. And uh, he, because he had to take some courses later, and he said, I, I think I want to practice. But I mean, he, he's just such an incredible young man who he is, uh, a lot of it, is a credit to Troy and Erica, his mom and dad. And um, it, there's no way in the world, I, I'll get around to it one day, but there's no way in the world I could express just all he's meant to everybody here. Back to row three. Uh, Nathan Thompson, Fox 23 in Tulsa. This is for Isaac. Isaac, you guys obviously got off to the slow start and they jumped out to that 15 nothing lead. How did you feel about you guys as a team, how you fought back to try to, try to come back in this one? Um, just first giving credit to a good Duke team. Um, to be honest, you know, I, I expected us to fight. You know, that's been our story uh, the whole year. You know, whether we get hit, um, you know, we always come back from adversity. We always play together. Uh, we love everyone, uh, one through 15, you know, even one through 30, including our staff. You know, we love everyone. So whenever we're propelled by love, as Coach says, you know, we're going to keep fighting and keep fighting until we can climb back and climb back. And, you know, time ran out. You know, I never really say, you know, we lost, you know, time ran out and we were on the wrong end of it. But I'm proud of this team, proud of what we accomplished. You know, we fought every day in practice, fought in the preseason, and we fought tonight. And unfortunately, you know, this is the last game uh, for us this season. But looking back on the season, that, that's been our, our calling card. We've been fighters and we've always been fighters. We'll take a question from Zoom, Matt Treconelli. Um, yes, Coach. Um, a couple questions. First question is, uh, you guys score uh, over 80 points per game, so what did Duke do defensively to really hold you guys significantly under uh, that winter average? And second question is, what are some successes? I know this season is unfortunately over, but what are some successes you guys have had um, during the course of the season and some positives that, that you and the players can uh, look at? Yeah, I mean, first, I mean, their protection around the rim is tremendous. And if you look at it, they're the 24th best defense in the country. But their ability to defend the three-point line is uh, amongst the top 30 in the country. And then their ability to have rim protection uh, is elite as well. So, I mean, if you look at it, Derek had six block shots tonight, but I bet he altered another six. So they, they have a presence inside the rim and they can really defend the arc. Those two things uh, for us, kind of what we do, we're able to get to the rim and we're able to make threes and, and they were able to prevent uh, that. You know, 30 wins, uh, just when you look back at the season, the most ORU has ever had at the Division I level is, is 27. And so to, to have 30 uh, wins in the 41-year history of the Summit League, there's only two of them that have ever gone undefeated, 21-0. Uh, and 0, it, it happened in back-to-back -back years. And so I, I think there's just a lot to be proud of from, from our players, from our staff, uh, that we'll take away, and, and that'll fuel us moving forward. Row three. Caden McFarland, 2 News, Oklahoma, Tulsa. Coach, um, you've mentioned some of those programs that don't play football but have had some sustained success uh, in basketball. It, you think ORU, you, you guys are, it, it appears, sort of on your way. Uh, what could be next for this program? You think it can be a sustained uh, success in terms of getting back to this tournament? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, I, I tell all these guys when you recruit them, when you bring them in, I mean, we're trying to get a team that's good enough to play in a Final Four. And uh, you've seen it in Wichita State, VCU, Loyola Chicago just a few years ago. Everybody's aware of George Mason. But you are trying to build a program that's good enough to be in a Final Four. And, and fortunately, we've got the caliber of players. Um, and, and, and we're getting a huge facility upgrade. And I think that'll not only help recruiting, but it'll help the development of our guys. And you know, the good news for me uh, right now is I could get them all back. Uh, they all have eligibility to return. I'm not telling you that they will, uh, but, but what I am telling you is that we have a group that is very invested in, in getting better as players. And I, I do feel that we're building something here that hopefully can get to a Final Four. We have one minute remaining. Final question from row three. 
Uh, Nathan Thompson, Fox 23 in Tulsa for Isaac. And it's a tough time to ask this question tonight, you know, right after a loss. But looking back on this season, how do you feel about it and all the accomplishments you guys were able to have in the regular season? Uh, I'm very proud of, of this team. Obviously, uh, the guy on my right, Coach Mills, he gave me a chance. Uh, obviously, when my back was against the wall, and I felt like I had nowhere to go two years ago. And then the guy to my left has made me more into a confident player each day. And so when I have guys like that to my right and to my left, I mean, I'm, we have guys like that all throughout the locker room who are there to encourage, who are there to uplift, who are great teammates and even better people. So when I'm able to accomplish something with a group of guys as I've had, uh, like Max and Carlos Reem, DJ, Patrick, uh, the guys who are seniors and even the guys who are underclassmen, I look back and, and I'm very proud because this is the first time in my life that I've actually felt a part of a brotherhood. It's the first time in my life that I've actually felt uh, proud to be a part of a team. And I played a lot of basketball, but these guys have been so amazing to not only me, but so many people around the country, even on campus, you know, they're leaders and, and they're mentors and they're gonna go out and do amazing things. So I'm proud of this team. And, and I've never been more proud of a team before just because of who we are. And so, you know, it's unfortunate, obviously, but, you know, I always call these guys my brothers and, and I'm thankful for everyone on the team. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.